Hey guys, I'm CJ, and today I'm going to check out a computer accessory that I've never liked, never owned, and never knew I needed so badly until now. Let's do this. Welcome to Elevated Systems. Again, I'm your host CJ, and today I'm taking a look at the BenQ Screen Bar Plus Computer Monitor Lite. Now, I have to start this review with some admissions. I typically never review or test a product in a vacuum, meaning when I do a product review, I either have one or more comparable products to compare it to, or I can draw from an extensive knowledge of the type of product I'm reviewing. I got neither for this. And to be fully transparent, that's because I've never met one of these monitor lights that I've liked. My only experience with these types of lights is way back when I did client-side IT support, occasionally a user would have a bar light on their display and they were all pretty much horrible either the light was shining in your eyes or there was a horrible glare on the screen or they were making this really annoying buzzing sound and because of that i've never considered buying or using one of these so the question that begs to be asked why would i agree to review one well first because it's benq I've owned and used BenQ products, well, their displays, and in my experience, they make quality products at a reasonable price. And because more than even the computer and electronic stuff I do on this channel, the bulk of my professional experience and expertise includes years of doing industrial hygiene and ergonomic assessments and OSHA compliance surveys. It's incredibly boring, but it's all still floating around up here. So. I know how to test lighting, specifically workstation lighting, so this review will be part technical testing the specs of the light, but mostly it'll be about the experience of using the light because it's been here on my main display and I've been using it for over two weeks now. Did BenQ change my mind with their screen bar plus? I'll get to that, but let's go back and start at the beginning. This is the BenQ screen bar plus, which I've already unboxed in a mass unboxing video, which nobody really watched, so I'll unbox it again. And to start, the box itself is pretty impressive. It's solid, simple branding, clean graphics. It definitely gives the impression of a premium product. And inside, the individual components are all packed in a molded plastic tray. First, the light bar itself, and it is about 45 centimeters long and about 32 millimeters in diameter and is constructed out of an aluminum alloy with a polycarbonate window. It has a USB type C input for five volt power and has a really nice silver media blasted finish and very subtle branding. No big graphics or logos in your face. Next, is the mount for the light and this counterbalance clip-on design has some heft weighing in at about 346 grams this has an abs body and some rubber non-slip surfacing and finally the control dial Again, this has a very premium feel. It's constructed out of ABS with an aluminum base and a non-slip rubber pad. There is an ambient light sensor, an auto dimmer button and a brightness and hue adjustment. And the power button and dial is also made out of metal and has a good tactile response. For setup demonstration and testing the light, I have a basic 24 inch display and I'm gonna do it all right here for ease of filming and testing, but I'll also be installing the light on my primary workstation display and just using it for a couple weeks, which should really help me assess how well the light actually works and if it's a beneficial addition to my workspace. Setup for the light is pretty simple. The light bar just simply clips into the mount. So the USB-C port is lined up in the middle of the bar. So the type C port is accessible. The light bar has 20 degrees of rotation within the mount and is held in place by spring tension and a counterbalance. And I have to say the weighted counterbalance does a pretty good job of keeping the bar in place. Now the manual says this is compatible with monitors that are between one and three centimeters. And that is the actual thickness of the top edge of the monitor as 
3.3 or 3.4 centimeters is the width of the surface that sits on top of the monitor. However, if the monitor tapers out further than 3 centimeters, the mount does open up quite a bit farther to mount to those types of displays. Next, the control dial wires has two ends. The type C side plugs into the light bar and the type A side plugs into USB power that provides at least five volts and one amp. For testing, I'll be using this USB A wall wart that meets those specs. Operation is fairly straightforward. Pressing the dial turns the light on and off. The right button selects brightness. or color temperature, adjust from a warm light at 2700 Kelvin to a cool light at 65 Kelvin with eight steps in between. The auto dimmer works by first dimming the light so the photo sensor can detect the ambient light and illuminate the working area to 500 lux. If the ambient light is less than 50 lux, it'll only illuminate the area to 300 lux. Also, if ambient lighting conditions change, the auto dimmer doesn't automatically adjust, you have to press the button again. So to test all those numbers I just rattled off, I have the light set up according to BenQ's testing specs, which is the light 45 centimeters above a 60 by 30 centimeter working area. I'll also be testing the lighting at about the 4100 Kelvin range because that's where the auto dimmer sets the light temp. Now, technically the color temp or degrees Kelvin of the light doesn't affect the luminance of the light. So a light set to 500 lux should be 500 lux at 2700 Kelvin or at 6500 Kelvin. However, the way this light works is there are two sets of LEDs in the light, 2700K LEDs and 6500K LEDs that alternate along the LED strip. And to adjust the temperature, what's actually happening is the intensity of each of those sets of LEDs is being adjusted. So changing the temp does actually affect the luminance. But the first thing BenQ claims is a max luminance of 900 lux at the center of the working area, and I can confirm with a reading of over a thousand lux. Next is the auto dimmer, which claims to illuminate the working area to a minimum of 500 lux. When I hit the auto dimmer, the light adjusts to over 600 lux in the center and does in fact read above 500 lux throughout the entire working area or within 10%, which is the margin of error of my light meter. Now, if I repeat the test with an ambient light of under 50 lux, the auto dimmer does illuminate the working area to a minimum of 300 lux. And finally, for more subjective testing, the chief concern I had about this type of light is, will it add glare to the screen? And I can say in general, no, it doesn't, meaning there isn't a bright spot or reflection on the screen. The asymmetrical light cast pattern does direct the light away from the screen, but this is a matte screen. Let's give it a true test and install it on this 2021 iMac with its notoriously glossy screen. And here, unfortunately, the screen bar does intensify the iMac's white bezels. So that can be a problem if you already have an issue with the white bezels. But again, there really isn't any glare or hot spots on the screen due to the light. All right, let's move on to my workstation to explore this a little more. And I have the light bar set up on my main display. And just because the vase amount is at the top center of this particular display, I did have to offset the light a couple of inches. However, that doesn't affect the lighting at all. Let's begin by explaining the purpose of a monitor light like this. If you're in a dimly lit area, continually refocusing from a bright display to a dim workspace causes eye fatigue. It makes sense because your iris is continually contracting and loosening. It's a muscle after all, and like any muscle, you work it too much, it gets tired, which leads to eye fatigue, pain, and even headaches. So illuminating the desk helps prevent that. Another important thing is that this light is not intended to be used as the only source of light in the room. It's meant to supplement your ambient light. Working in a dark room with just this as a light source will also lead to eye fatigue because even if you aren't aware, your eyes will be continually adjusting from the strong light in your primary field of view to the dark peripherals. So for best results, you should have some other source of ambient lighting in the room. For me, when I'm just doing productivity work, you know, taking care of some admin stuff, I have my room lights on. However, those are all behind me. So even with my overhead room lights on, my workspace is usually only illuminated to about 250 lux. So the monitor light bumping it up to 500 lux 
is a huge improvement. Now, when I'm editing, I don't like my overhead lights on. I prefer a dark room so I can get much more accurate contrast and color accuracy. But I did notice a while ago that while working the dark, I was a lot less productive because I just got tired really fast. I couldn't keep my eyes open. So my solution was this. I have a primary RGB light behind my display. I use it for adding color to the set while filming. So while working, I just set it to white and it gave me that peripheral light and even some light from under the display to illuminate my working area without impacting my display. And it seemed to work. However, I can be sitting here editing for seven, eight, nine hours sometimes. And after that long, I would definitely have some significant eye fatigue and even headaches. So again, adding this monitor light increased the brightness of the working area. And again, I could work longer with less fatigue. Now, my primary concern is how does this light affect the display quality? And surprising to me, it actually improved it. The screen bar actually improved the image by giving the matte display a very subtle glossy appearance. Now, the benefits of a glossy display like the iMac I just tested is more defined contrast, better color chroma definition, and sharper images. However, the glare or reflection on the screen can counter those benefits. A matte display eliminates most of the glare and reflection issue. However, the matte is actually a texture which can affect the sharpness, contrast, and saturation of an image. What's happening with this light is those scattered light photons are basically scattering in that matte texture, filling it in and giving the outer layer of the display a sheen that simulates a very subtle glossy display. It's basically the same as how light interacts with a matte finish on the car, giving it that nice sheen, but not the reflective qualities of a glossy paint job. So you get the good qualities of a glossy display, sharper image, more defined contrast and color vibrance, but not the distinct reflections, which also helps with preventing eye strain. Now on a completely black image, I can see a slight reflection, but it's not noticeable in anything other than a dark display. So after that analytical and observational analysis, what's the final conclusion on the BenQ Screen Bar Plus? Well, let's start with the pros and cons and for cons, I honestly only have one, the cost. This light cost $130 US, that's not cheap. So to determine if it's worth the price, we need to look at the pros. And first is build quality and materials. And this is definitely a premium in that regard. High quality materials, very clean finishes and solidly built. There really isn't much that can be done to improve it in that area. Next, function, and the Screen Bar Plus functions exactly as advertised. It illuminated the working area without negatively impacting the image quality. In fact, for me, it improved it. The auto dimming or auto lighting feature worked and provided either the 500 or 300 lux it was designed to. And if you are curious about why 500 lux, that just happens to be the OSHA standard for minimal illuminance of an office. Probably not a coincidence. I think the control dial at desk level is great, both because it allows for ambient light readings at the working surface. And again, in my experience, the top mounted buttons were always a bad design feature, blindly reaching for the right button and usually knocking the light out of whack in the process. The Screen Bar Plus also has a wider brightness and color range than any of the comparable monitor lights I was able to find online. And of course, more subjectively, it definitely helped me by allowing me to work with less fatigue, eye pain, and headaches due to long screen time. Now, does all that justify the price tag? Well, for me, two weeks ago, I would never consider paying anything for one of these. But now that I've used it for two weeks, I would seriously consider it. However, my last concern was if I pay $130 for this, how long is it going to last? And I had to reach out to Ben Q for that answer. And I was told the Screen Bar Plus has a general lifespan of 50,000 hours. That's over five years of continual 24 seven use or about 17 years of using it eight hours a day. Of course, if there is a failure due to a defect, those usually happen pretty quickly. So the monitor light is covered by a one year warranty. But in the end, I can only say that it is definitely something that's going to remain as a permanent part of my desk setup. And hopefully this review helped you make up your mind one way or the other. If you want more info on the BenQ Screen Bar Plus monitor light, there is a link in the description below. The like and subscribe buttons just happen to be down there too. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.